Just found out my partner has been cheating with a 20-year-old colleague for six months. Yesterday, my entire world turned upside down. I discovered that my partner, 28 female, of four years and the mother of our two-year-old son has been cheating on me, 31 male, for the past six months with a 20-year-old colleague of hers. I'm still processing it, feeling an overwhelming mix of anger, betrayal, and confusion. Looking back, there were so many moments when I felt something was off. I'd asked her countless times about her sudden habit of staying extra hours at the gym and why she seemed so emotionally distant. Every time she'd brush me off, make me feel like I was overthinking or even crazy for doubting her. She made me believe that I was paranoid, and each time I voiced my concerns, she'd double down, claiming nothing was going on. But my gut knew something was wrong. What makes this even harder is that she's been blaming her infidelity on me. I'm a recovering gambling addict, sober for 17 months now, and she's used that as a reason to say she can never fully trust me again. She claims my past addiction is the reason she felt distant and wanted to look elsewhere. The worst part is, I've been committed to conquering that part of my life for good, and I feel like she's using my past as an excuse to justify her actions, and maybe even as an easy out to leave me. When I asked her yesterday to leave the house, she threatened to take my son away from me. We have shared custody, but she said she'd tell the authorities that I've been hitting him just to get what she wants. She ended the relationship two weeks ago and said she wants our son for 26 days of the month and I can have him for. This makes no sense since I am his primary caretaker since I work part-time. I have no idea why she's treating me like this all of a sudden. It feels like every word, every action is aimed at destroying me. I thought, despite everything, we could still co-parent respectfully for our son. But now, I'm scared of what she might do next. We're still living together, which is only adding fuel to an already raging fire. I have to see her every day, and each time, I feel another wave of anger and hurt wash over me. I never imagined this would happen to us. Our history, our family, and our plans all feel shattered. We share a home, our memories, and most importantly, our son, who doesn't understand what's going on but is deeply affected by the tension between us. I'm trying to stay strong for him, but inside, I'm barely holding it together. What also breaks me is that today, she told me that they have been in a relationship officially for two months and that she is looking at places to buy slash slash rent with him. I feel extremely angry by the fact that she completely neglects my son's needs here. If anyone here has advice on how to manage this betrayal while still living together, please share it. Right now, I feel lost, struggling to keep my anger in check and keep my mind clear about what's best for our son. I'm not sure how to start rebuilding after such a deep betrayal. Thank you for reading. Just knowing there are people who understand this pain gives me a small glimmer of hope. Let's see comments. Her actions tell you that the relationship is over. Your primary concern needs to be your son. See a family lawyer and start working out custody for the child. Also need to figure out what you're going to do with the house and other things like that. There's no use trying to save the relationship. The fact that she's looking for a place with the AP tells you that she's completely moved on. Find someone to talk to either a friend, family, or therapist. It helps when you have somebody that you can confide in and talk about your emotions with. Good luck. Sounds like she doesn't want to reconcile, which means there's nothing to save. I'm sorry, this truly sucks. Time to start separating and looking for the best way forward for your kid. Focus on yourself, too. Make sure you're eating, drinking, being active. Stay sober thinking about your own future. This is the worst, and I'm sorry you're going through it. It's going to be tough for a while, but it will get better. Just focus on one step at a time. Big hugs. Bud record record record. Gather evidence and honestly start the process. You need to protect yourself and your kid Bud. 
She is clearly not well. A relationship with a 20-year-old will just break her, but that's her problem, not yours. Safeguard your mental health and your son's. My advice is to gray rock her and make sure you look after yourself. Start looking into alternate living arrangements and protecting your assets. The complete lack of responsibility or guilt she feels tells you everything you need to know. She's blame shifting. The dude is 20 years old. The second things between your ex and him get serious and he'll flake. Life will hit him hard and he'll bail and she'll be alone. Speak to a lawyer, speak to a therapist and keep gray rock on her. Establish a schedule where the kid is looked after, where you won't have to spend time together. If she's using your past failures to justify cheating, then she's one big B. Sort yourself out. Talk to a lawyer. The fact she'd use your struggle as an excuse for her weakness and disgusting behavior should be repulsive to you and make you want to get as far away from her as possible. Take the newfound you and find someone worthy of your efforts. Also, don't worry, her actions will backfire on her. What can a 20-year-old man do for an older woman with a kid? Nothing. He'd stop wanting to play daddy to another man's kid and bounce because he's young. Update me. Let's see another story. GF28F has a guy gym friend. They exchange socials and then proceed to calling and texting, not on my time. How can I BF27M? Not think about this guy Jim friend being more than just a friend. Before I get a ton of responses about me being insecure, this is not about that. It's about the facts being presented and running with those facts. It's all in the details and what I am being told by GF. Going on four years of a relationship, it's always been strong and transparent. We would always update each other without being too clingy more so for respect and to continue in establishing trust. It was up until the end of August where we began having issues. Our relationship was at the point of coming to an end in August. One day, I decided to check phone records for IDK what exact reason, maybe a gut feeling. In the phone logs, I was quick to highlight a specific number. This number was being contacted while on her way to the gym and when she would go out with her girlfriends during that billing cycle. I will go into more detail about the calls. There's more. Keep in mind, I was just seeing this number without knowing who it was. This got me overthinking, and so I called the number, and a guy answered. I cross-referenced the number to my contact list to see if maybe it was a mutual friend. Not being a mutual friend slash relative slash family, etc., that was enough for me to confront GF and ask her about who this was. She was not frantic when confronted. She reassured it was a guy she met at the gym and that they were solely friends. I believed her. I still found it weird as we've always been open about who we meet, especially people from the opposite sex. She had said something along the lines of, he goes to the gym and we exchange socials and then numbers. His name is, that was that. I just knew a name. I looked him up and had a face to him now. I still felt like there was more to this. About a couple days later before her aunt's wedding and in the morning, I saw her phone vibrate and saw an IG notification from this guy Jim friend. I asked her again why he was messaging her. GF let me know that they would often exchange memes, reels, and whatnot and that there was no flirting. And again, there I was trying to dig for more. That same evening, she made an attempt to call the guy Jim friend while at the wedding, verified through phone records. I didn't know about this phone until October, when the new phone logs became available. I just began connecting the dots at this point. For the September billing cycle, there were numerous calls. Two to three calls on her way to the gym, lasting more than ten men's. One call lasting twelve men's when she visited her OBGYN, on her annual routine visit. I was able to verify this was an actual annual visit through emails. One outgoing call to the guy Jim friend at her aunt's wedding, lasting one minds. He probably didn't pick up. 
One call during an ER visit where she had a yeast infection slash follow-up from her OBGYN appointment. One call at our home lasting eight mines while I went to the pharmacy to pick up her antibiotics. I didn't know the call details as the bill wasn't available until the 1st of October, so I had to wait to find out she was calling slash 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 texting this guy Jim friend. This is when we talked and I established my boundaries. I expressed to her how these interactions made uncomfortable. She said she would no longer talk to this guy and that was that. We really tried to fix our relationship and as I mentioned before, we were going through a rough time. We made an attempt to move on from this. The following week, things got really interesting. I had asked her if she was still talking to the guy Jim friend. I told GF I didn't want to wait to see the next phone bill and be really disappointed. I asked for GF's honesty and this is where things hit the roof. She admitted she was still in contact with the guy Jim friend. For the entire month of October, I was living with doubt about her not cutting ties with this guy Jim friend and the truth came out. She lied to me again. Fast forward to today. I was able to verify the phone records, October logs, one call lasting 11 mines on the day of my nephew's baptism. We had stopped by to grab a gift for him and she got down to the store. It now makes sense as to why she took a real long time to get a gift and come back. I waited in the car during this call. One outgoing call the same day from above. The call was made at 10.43 p.m. She went out that night with her girlfriends and she made an outgoing call lasting one minute, maybe didn't pick up. One call lasting nine mines on her way home from the gym. She ended the call right before entering the car garage. Verified this through camera footage. Is this behavior odd? I really don't hope to hear that I am an insecure son of a gun. I honestly feel like the setting and times of these calls are just weird and honestly disrespectful. Mostly, I am upset that she continued to talk to this gym guy friend knowing it could end our relationship. When confronted these past two months, GF has said that they would just gossip about each other lives. I've never been against having friends of the opposite sex, but when you hide the friendship, continue to lie, and then say, he's just a friend and nothing physical happened, never met in person. How can trust be established? To me, girlfriend really liked this guy to let go just because I had asked. Let's see comments. Also, whilst women and men can be friends, right? They're not the type of friends you meet at the gym. Keep hidden from your partner. Literally start phone calling regularly when your BF isn't around. Meet up with in secret and phone mid-freaking wedding with your partner. Like no op, you aren't insecure. She's cheating and we all know it. She calls him when she's going to meet him. Either before either before the gym or on girls night. Girls night is the big obvious flying red flag. He probably doesn't even know about you. Call him. Tell him you assume your now XGF is cheating on you with him and he doesn't know about you, but you're kicking her out and the relationship with her. And move on and find someone that doesn't hide a guy friend from you. Girls don't just make male friends at the gym randomly. It does happen. This isn't real. And they don't hide new friends from their BF and sneaky away to call them or make sure you never see it. This doesn't happy. Stop playing detective and accept you very already found the evidence. And also even if in some mental land she's just leading him on and hasn't done anything, she's till his him from you, broken your trust and ruined your relationship. You'll never get over it and never stop suspecting her so up your standards and find someone that doesn't do this to you.